Follow me, Dragonborn. Yes. You know her as well as I do. Why does he concern you? It's been some time and people move on. She did try to write, and it's been hard for her to let you go. She depended on you. She loved you with all her heart. But now she is happy again and is fine in her own way, however that way may be. If you really love her, really in your heart, you will accept her how she is now. But you must let her go. It doesn't work that way anymore. She's nobility and she is with Bobby now. Yes, Robert. He really is a nice, charming man. He tries. Although she can be a handful, he's good for her. It's going to be hard for her when she sees you again. Please don't ruin it. Go to the Tap and Tack and speak to Colin. He's the barkeeper there. If there are any rumours to be had, he is the one to talk to. He might be able to help. Take this key to Rigmore's apartment. If she's not there, you might find some clues as to where she is.
this better be good. Rigmore, huh? Saw her about a week ago. She came in here with that Leowin boy. What's his name again? Oh yeah, Robert. There was a bit of a scuffle with some of the locals and his bodyguards. Yeah, he doesn't go anywhere without them. One is a huge ox called Grom, a Nord. The other is a sly little fellow, would knife you in the back without a second thought. They call him Tiny. I told me Lady Rigmore that it would be best to leave. She paid for any damage and they left. I haven't seen her since. That girl? <laughs> she's a wildcat. Hardly surprising with what she's been through. Watch the kid grow up. The family was well respected in Bruma. When they took them all away, it was quite a shock. No one heard anything for years, and just a little after the Count fell off his horse, she returned. Deeds, titles, the whole shebang. The whole city turned out. That was a day to remember. She just wanted to be like everyone else. I know recently she moved out of the keep and now stays at her apartment. It's just around the corner. She doesn't go there often, though, but it's worth a try. Out the door, fifth house on the left. My pleasure. Don't forget, if you want to taste some fine ales, this is the place to visit. Welcome to the Tab Attack. Please. <laughs> Get yourself a home. Want to taste some fine ales? I'm all ears. In the right place. Need something? Get you anything? One life ends another. Dead man hanging in the tree. He was waiting for his other three. The wife never cried. Something in the little girl died. Selfish reasons for the wife. Little did she know it was more than one ended life. Little girl sleep. Little lonely girl in deep. Never to awaken to another sunrise. Only then was the wife's errors realized. End one life and end another. Not forgotten. Cast adrift in this time. Paying for someone else's crime. Make my flesh cry red. Cruel words, me said. Make me cry. Make me want to die. But one thing is certain. I will not let fate close the curtain. But you will not break me. I will not let you see. 
I will defy you to my very last breath, even on the brink of death. I am not forgotten by those I love. Right. Okay. I've never kept a diary before, so here goes. Frithoff has encouraged me to do it. Says it'll be good for me. Actually, it's a bit weird, like talking to myself. But now I've moved back into the old house. <laughs> My apartment. I can finally begin to breathe again. I know Mom's disappointed with me, but she doesn't show it. As for Malisam, he can do one. The keep made me feel suffocated, and after everything I've been through, I just need a little more time to adjust and my own space to do it in. Friathov has been great, and understands, and has been really helpful. Kiris too. And the poetry and drawings have also helped me focus a lot. I have to move on. Start afresh. I have had to come to terms I might never see Dragonborn again. Those first years were especially hard for me. After getting no replies for my letters, I resigned myself to the fact Dragonborn has moved on too. Even now, I wake up in a cold sweat calling out, who is that sitting at the foot of my bed? Is that you? Have you come back for me? But it's only the shadows. Apparently, it's normal. You create a certain bond. I never knew that feeling before. You would do anything for those that you trust and come to love. You give yourself freely, openly, with no words needed. With just the slightest passing glance you see into someone's soul. The sacrifices you would make in a heartbeat for that person, no questions asked. The sacrifices Dragonborn made for me. To be free and happy. Ties that bind. For eternity. But I have moved on now. And if they think I'm going to marry that coral kid, They've got another thing coming, and Malisam can shove his protocol up his ass. I only put up with him because of Kiris. Malisam's one defining feature in his life was adopting her as a small child. I finally found out what was between them. She's his daughter and protege. Apparently, on a pilgrimage to the shrine of his beloved mistress, he passed a ransacked burning wagon train and came across Carice wandering disoriented in the road, calling for her parents. She was three years old. I love Carice. We share something in common. We're sisters. What a shitty, cruel world we have been born into. Oh, and I have first-hand experience of that. But now? I think I've earned myself some slight indulgence and melancholy. Fight hard, play hard, right? As for Bobby, he's actually quite cute. He doesn't try to handle me with kid gloves. He's honest, caring, and likes to party. And I think he understands me. 
He listens and is agreeable. And he's fun. I'm going to rent a room at the Roxy Inn. It's so more convenient. Bobby can sail up the Nibbin Estuary into the lake. I love it there, by the lake. Reminds me of Riften. I'm sure Dragonborn would approve.